வந்தே பிருந்தாவனச்சரம் வல்லவேஜன வல்லபம் ஜெயந்தி சம்பவம் தாம வைஜெயந்தி விபூஷணம் டூவிங் திஃப்த் ஸ்லோகா இல்லையா ச கவி கத்தியதே சிரஷ்டா ரமதே எத்திர பாரதி ரசபாவ குணிபூதை அலங்காரை குணோதயை ச ரசபாவாதி குணிபூதை we were uh, looking at rasa and bhava so rasas are nine in number shringara hasya karuna uh, veera raudra bhayanaka adbhuta uh, shanta bibhatsa i keep forgetting that so there are totally nine rasas shringara dibihi these gain prominence in a kavyam so it talked about how we have vibhava anubhava and vyabhichari bhavas or sanchari bhavas which contribute to something called sthayi bhava and the pinnacle of sthayi bhava is your rasa okay now the next word that he uses here is guni bhutaihi ரச பாவ குணிபூதை அலங்காரை குணோதயை நோ குணிபூத இஸ் ஆல்சோ அ ஸ்பெசிபிக் டெக்னிக்கல் டேர்ம் ஹியர் லெட்ஸ் ஏ வி ரீட் அ காவியம் தெர் இஸ் எனி எனி சென்டென்ஸ் ஆர் ஐ வுட் ராதர் கோ வித் காவியம் ஆர் பத்தியம் பிகாஸ் இட் இஸ் வித் ரெலவென்ஸ் டு அ பத்திய ஆர் அ ஸ்லோக இன் தி காவியம் இன் அ பத்திய காவியம் now when you read a shloka there is there are layers of meanings right so we go on first we have the vachya artha which is the vachaka shabda shabda and the artha we always have a word and its meaning now the word can give rise to a de- just a direct meaning which is called your vachya artha which is the first level of meaning the second level is lakshana where the meaning does not fit at all the, the, the literal meaning may not fit but then you go into a, a, a intended meaning there so that is the lakshana for example when i say uh, uh, janaha hasanti then it means the literal meaning there is janaha all people or many people hasanti they are laughing this is a very straight forward sentence with a straight forward meaning when you go uh, to this sentence let's say lokaha hasishyati the world will laugh then you don't take directly it's not like a cartoon where the world has a mouth and an eyes and all that and that it's, it's not a walt disney cartoon here for the world the the earth to laugh like that right so what you, the intended meaning there is actually லோகே ஏ ஜனாஹா வர்த்தந்தே தே ஹசந்தி இது சோ த லோக இஸ் அ வேர்ட் விச் டஸ் நாட் டெரெக்ட்லி கனெக்ட் வித் ஹசதி பட் ஆர் ஹசிஷ்யதி யூ டேக் இட் டு மீன் தட் த பீப்பிள் இன் த வேர்ல்ட் ஆர் த ஹியூமன் கைண்ட் ஆர் த லிவிங் பீயிங்ஸ் இன் த வேர்ல்ட் தே வில் லாஃப் அட் யூ ஆர் whatever however you want to bring the context in so there lokaha is a padam that cannot have a direct meaning with the hasati because it is an achetana vastu so you go into the next level of meaning which is loke vartamanaha janaha hasishyanti so this word now is called the lakshaka shabda wherein that lakshaka gives rise to a lakshya artha is it clear uh, maybe i should use the white board for this to give the so we need to understand what is this guni bhutam that's where we are going with right so i talked about two levels here first is vachakaha and then which gives rise to vachyaha which is the artha so we are looking at the the shabda shabdaha versus artha when i say a word it should give a meaning when i say vachyaha vachakaha this is the direct meaning there are no steps involved in it example you have janaha hasanti the same example that i gave uh, uh, people laugh okay now when i go to the next one i have something called lakshakaha shabdaha the word there is the shabda and the meaning there is your lakshyaha arthaha this let me call it as intended hmm? 
just to understand so when i say lokaha hasati the direct meaning here is world laughs is your direct meaning but that does not make sense for us because the world is not a chetana vastu so what do you take lokaha is equal to janaha the entire community of people janaha hasati so now here this is your intended meaning is that clear now there is another level why do i say this this is okay the in this example it is just a so common an example that people don't even think that there is a step involved in this but let's look at uh, another uh, um, uh, sentence where we need the vyang uh, sorry uh, vyanjakah is the shabda and vyangyah is your artha this is suggested Now let's say I use the word Ganga Yam Goshaha. This is a very common example. I will use this because you will be assaulted by this example as you read Alankara Shastra further and further. Uh, Ganga Yam Goshaha. Goshaha is a village, or Goshaha is a cow shed. So there is a uh, a a, um, a cow shed in Ganga. Now you Ganga. is equal to pravaha what does the word ganga mean the direct meaning of um yeah direct meaning of ganga is pravaha right the flow of ganga the waters of ganga can a cow shed exist on ganga it cannot so what is the intended meaning here he intends to say that there is a cow shed on the banks of ganga so the intended meaning here would be ganga the padam ganga itself is giving me the meaning of tiram this is the bank of the river ganga so in other words ganga yam gosha the literal meaning is or the direct meaning is a cow shed in ganga but the intended meaning is that there is a cow shed uh, 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 on the tiram of ganga we are not talking about floating houses like in kashmir please this is like a, a an example that is usually given here uh, like the boat houses children yeah, in kashmir no now why do we use this padam ganga instead of saying tire goshaha so there should be an intention there for for you to use the padam ganga so the suggestion there is so what i want to uh, suggest here is ganga is as uh, synonymous with the, it is synonymous with pavitratvam or sheetalatvam yeah when i say ganga the moment the picture that comes to your mind is oh it is the most sacred river it's probably uh, because it is a river it is very cool and it comes from uh, himavat parvata so the idea of icy mountains and everything would give rise to some sheetalatvam there and any tapam that we have any uh, uh, suffering that we have is uh, is associated with heat and uh, that is because of papam ganga uh, is able to remove our papam and so it can remove our suffering which means it can remove our heat which means it is sheetala you understand so this pavitratvam or sheetalatvam is the intended meaning in this is the suggested meaning in the sense that as much as uh, uh, sanctity that we uh, give ganga we give so much of sanctity towards that cow shed also எனக்கு பிடிச்ச எக்ஸாம்பிள் என்னன்னா ஐ சே கபாலி கோவில்ல வீடு இருக்கு கபாலி கோவிலுக்குள்ள யூ கான்ட் ஹாவ் அ ஹவுஸ் ரைட் டெம்பிள் இன் சைட் த டெம்பிள் யூ கான்ட் ஹாவ் அ ஹவுஸ் பட் இட் இஸ் ஆஸ் க்ளோஸ் டு த டெம்பிள் தட் வென் யூ ஸ்டாண்ட் இன் த ஹவுஸ் இட் செல்ஃப் யூ கேன் சி த கோபுரம் அண்ட் கோபுர தர்ஷனேன புண்ணியம் புண்ணியம் பவதி so you you don't even need to go into the temple you can stand at the house itself and get that punyam that you would probably get when you go to that uh, temple the same way here also 
the the ghosha or the village or kaushet is as cool as ganga it is so close to ganga that even standing on in the kaushet is a great punyam there that pavitratvam is your suggestion why are we going to so much remember that this is called dhvani ime kavyam when there is a padyam when there is a shloka that you are trying to explain you take a literal meaning first and then you try to find out if there are any lakshanas sometimes it may be there sometimes it may not be there sometimes there may be uh, dhvani sometimes uh, there may be dhvani associated with the lakshana sometimes there can be a dhvani without even getting that uh, uh, lakshana so for example if you if i take the um um uh, okay let's take another example of mahode ha uh. so here in this gangayam gosha suppose all i want to highlight is the samipyam hmm. then it still works it still works with what i don't understand nama ganga ganga tire nama sami samipe tatra tire eva अपॉन द The reason why they are saying is not just samipyam, uh, but it is it it partakes of that air of pavitrata, that that uh, shanti, that shitalatvam, all that yes. stuff also there in that village, as if it was really in the Ganga. I think. Correct. Whereas the previous one, jana uh, loka hasati tyatra, kevalam lakshyartha eva. Yeah, okay. there is no purpose there as such. Hmm. 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 Got it. yeah so i don't need to go through this intended meaning also see sometimes not always do we need this intended meaning it can be a direct jump from ganga to this pavitratvam but that happens not here in not in this example but it can happen in other examples like mugdha sa iti if i say mugdha then that innocence immediately contributes to the context there depends Okay, so uh, when we Mugh- come, uh, how does Mugdha Sa have a suggested meaning? Sila erangal la. Ipa adha vada inda kapali na han rukkaliya. What is that? Uh, uh, pa pa Parvati. Um, pa Parvati rumbo oru mosamana nalleme ke ondu thai na. Adi na tomcha um, kapali na han pina ki na han or example or naru kome. Then the other thing I heard is, Irani ma astanga ta surya hai. ha huh, that also you can use yes ah uh, that's a good one ah uh, that's a good one seri adu eduthupom na edo kavyathile end example eduthundirken ah astangataha surya what is the literal meaning here direct meaning here would be the sun has set illaya uh, okay the sun has set is your direct meaning what is the vyangyartha here suggested meaning there is there is no lakshana here it just fits beautifully because the context is there for you to understand that the sun has set nothing else is uh, going on here there is no problem with the direct meaning so you have the direct meaning but then for each person the sun has set thing can trigger so many other uh, images in the mind for a brahmana or a kshatriya they may want to do sandhya vandanam there sandhya upasana samaya ha iti uh, or uh, uh, sandhya upasana maybe for a woman it could say uh, uh, deepa uh, prajwalana samaya ha prajwalana samaya ha or for a child it could be i have to go home for someone who is outside uh, griha gamanam for him the moment he hears that astangataha oh it's already uh, you know set so i have to go home so so many things come about these are all suggested in the mind which has nothing to do with astangataha actually directly this is what th- that is associated with that particular time frame that idea comes to their mind yeah. so this is suggestion 
Now, in a kavyam, you have a direct meaning. In a padyam, shloka, you have a direct meaning. Then you have a suggested meaning. If the suggested meaning is more beautiful, then it is called dhvani. So you have a vachyartha, vachyartha, and then you have this vyengyartha. These are the two things that we are going to look at. Which is better? If the vachyartha is better than the vyengyartha, vyengyartha is just simple, then it's okay. Then it's called a normal kavyam. It's not a dhvani kavyam. If the or uh, you can say guni bhuta vyengyam, it depends, whatever. In a, in a simple setting, let's look at whether the vachyartha is better or the vyengyartha is better. What is better? If the vyengyartha is better, then it is called dhvani. If the vachyartha is better, it can either be a madhyama kavya or a adhama kavya. Adhama kavya is where there is no beauty at all. Whereas if it is a madhyama kavyam, it means the vachyartha is actually beautiful here, uh, uh, much more than the vyengyartha. That is called guni bhuta vyengya. Where the Vyangyartha is Guni Bhutam. Guni Bhutam Ityukte, it is suppressed. It is sort of uh, um, not as beautiful as the, it doesn't gain so much of prominence as the Vachyartha. Is that clear? Huh? Now we will go to the Shloka because that's where your, that he has mentioned this. Atra, guni Bhutam Punaha Vadat. Ah, guni Bhutam Iti, va? Ah, ah. Okay. Um, Now, most of the times in where there is an alankara and there is no great suggestion, the alankara beautifies your shloka. And that shloka is so beautiful that you are, when you try to give, a, 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 let me go back to the book so that I'll, I'll tell you. I think I told about it in the earlier shloka before where there was an alankara. Why is it not that alankara? Why is it this alankara? Can't we have? Huh? In Drishtanta Alankara, we saw this example here. Right? Bimba Pratibimba Baba. Krishna Katha Aswadaha and Amritasya Aswadaha. These two are Krishna Katha Varnanam Amritasya Aswadaha. These two have been said here. Right? Shaktya Shauri Krita Aswadaha. Sthane Mandadiyamapi. Amritam Yedin Labhyeta. Kimna Grikheta Manavaihi. Why wouldn't a man take on Amritam if he is presented with Amritam? It is so, it is true that uh, when someone has the opportunity to describe about Krishna, he is going to describe about Krishna and it is appropriate for him also. This is so beautiful. Instead of the, the Vyengya from here, look at the, this is the Vachyartha that we are talking about. This is the direct meaning of this shloka. What is the Vyengyartha there? The Vyengyartha is Shauri Katha Aswadaha Yatha Uchitaha Bhavati Tatha or Yatha Amritam Amritasya Grahanam Uchitam Bhavati Tatha Krishna Katha Varnanam Api Uchitam Vartate. This is your Vyengyartha here. But this Vyengyartha is not as beautiful as what is expressed here in the Vachyartha. If I write a shloka like that, that will not be as beautiful as this. So, guni bhutam, guni bhutam ityukte gunaha. Gunaha it does not mean quality or anything like that. Guna also means subsidiary, secondary. It's not pradhanam, it is gaunam. Pradham, pramukham, pramukhyam or gaunam. The, the, these are two opposite words. Pradhana means important, gauna means something that has become secondary here. Now here, our aupamyam or the similarity that we talked about, uh, Krishna Katha Varnanam uh, is the same as or Amrita Grahanam. This comparison has lost its color when compared to what this plain Vachyartha gives you. The Vachyartha seems much more beautiful. Would you not take Amritam? Has a more better uh, tone and uh, uh, beauty than just plainly saying, oh, yes, Amrita Grahanam Yatha Vartate Tatha Asti. Is that clear? Hmm. So that is called Guni Bhuta. If the Vyengyartha is much more beautiful than what is there in the Vachyartha that I have explained, then that is called a Dhvani Kakyam. 
that is the highest form of kapyam uttama kapyam it okay guni bhutam is not wrong there are many shlokas there are many uh, poets who have used situations where guni bhuta vyangya is also considered as a very good uh, 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 poetry no all poetries need not be dhvani poetries you can have guni bhuta vyangyas also there can be shlokas where there are only alankaras so it depends on the context there sarasa bhava guni bhutaihi there can be rasadhvani there can be bhavadhvani there can also be guni bhuta vyangyas and there are eight types of guni bhuta vyangyas that are mentioned by kavya prakashakara or other alankarikas most of them mention agudha as sandigdha pradhanyam there are many uh, types of uh, uh, gudha vyangyam these are all guni bhuta vyangya types of kavyam there are totally eight types of kavyas agudha is a variety of guni bhuta so agudha adi guni bhuta guni bhuta vyangya hi next we will i'll only look yeah. at the ha putra varnyate mahodi eta kavya prakashi asti va agudha adi iti um chapter 5 6 nanikra mm hmm mm hmm aradhu lasathil irukku mm hmm yeah yadava bidayam guni bhuta vengya kavyam va appadi illa ellame ungalku vandu appadi illa so because he mentioned in this shloka i was uh, thinking maybe he is telling that this will have hmm. no, no this, he has also mentioned rasam no rasa dhvani is the highest form of uh, dhvani kavya okay. wherever there is a rasa that comes out that is the best form of kavya so it, it can be there here also it doesn't matter and oru oru shloka the purthu irukku so so a kavya can have uh, some shlokas with guni bhuta vyangya some with any alankaras some with dhvani right yeah. i mean it, it, it's, it's a it's combination of that combination so that you don't get bored <laughs> yeah <laughs> next is alankara hi again alankara i will only look at the kavi paksha here okay so alankara hi anuprasa upamaadi bhihi kavi pakshe anuprasa is a shabda alankara and upama is an artha alankara well, uh, i think i spoke about the kavya shariram like how a person has uh, uh, flesh and bones uh, uh, makes up makes up a person's body in the same way shabda and artha make up uh, the body of a kavyam you can have ornaments for either the shabda or the artha when you have shabda alankara they are anuprasa etc anuprasa uh, uh, yamaka um, uh, all these things come under the shabda alankara section upama etc come under the artha alankara uh, 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 section where the artha or the meaning is being ornamented by with all these things uh, uh, different figures of speech and grow figures of speech is just a very simple uh, uh, way of saying it but alankara has a more a bigger you know more beautiful connotation there that is it uh, 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 it ornaments the meaning here next is gunodayaihi guna udayaihi i spoke about the gunas also last time where i said just like how we have uh, shaurya adi guna you know veeram shauryam danam these are all the gunas that a person can possess which are beyond his body and hand how is it beyond the body only if a person has the capable biceps irundha thane ambu vida mudiyum gra mathiri irukke not necessary ambu vidrathu or you know throwing an arrow is not the only form of bravery that we can think about bravery is something that is so intrinsic to a person which is like a second nature apdinla solrom illa it's like a guna that is present in him no matter whether he is physically capable of expressing it in the way that we think about that bravery can be in so many different ways even you know uh, bringing up a child in this world in a in a great manner you know in a very protective manner itself requires so much of bravery in the mind i feel in today's world so that sort of a bravery doesn't need physical strength to uh, um you know show it out so gunam is beyond the shariram in the same way 
in a kavyam also this guna is something beyond the words and the meaning how why examples idella you will read in your fifth level when you are reading kavya prakasha if and if at all you read end up studying kavya prakasham then it will have a great uh, uh, you will understand that better mahode ha uh. so uh, we are talking about uh, anuprasa dibhi etc upama now he, he is saying both of them shabda alankara and artha alankara he is considering as kavya shariram yes uh, right and then uh, the 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 gunas are uh, the madhurya and then uh, i think there are three or more madhurya prasad ojah mm. ojah three gunas right now those are like the qualities of the of the body yes. right mm. but uh, but all for all of the all of these it's a kavi paksha but whether it's kavi paksha or uh, the the shrotra uh, shrotu paksha it is the mm. same right the guna is the guna and the, the alankara mm, is the alankara this one i think is the shrastra paksha <laughs> not shrotra paksha the same ha huh? shrasta and kavi are the same no no shrasta is uh, uh, loka shrasta brahma chaturmukha brahma i think oh tatha va oh i was thinking mm. of kavi paksha i was thinking kavi versus the shrota i was thinking okay okay yeah, no no kavi pakshe shrastra pakshe iti oh brahma okay brahma na okay okay so you're talking it's a comparison apare kavi samsare kavireka prajapati उटिंग Okay, got it, got it. Mm. This is only talking about the poet as a creator. How does okay. he create? Okay. See, uh, the earlier sloka was: if the moment I have Valmiki and Vyasa in my mind, mm. I will also make an effort into creating. Mm. So, who is a creator? Sa kavihi katte te srastha iti. Atasma deva srastha nama kavihi api srastha iti ma. Okay, I didn't make the difference. Okay, nama vishva srastha iti tatra. Yes. उपमाधनी Uh, 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 I, we would yeah. prefer Dhani to yeah. any day to an yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Uh, so Guna Udayehi Madhuryadi Bihi Kavi Pakshe Bharati Vani Vani is Kavi Vani the speech of Kavi. Wherever yatra ramate yatra ramate ityute balat akarshanam bina swayameva. निरर्गल प्रवाह रूपा वाणी स्पीच कम्स विदाउट इवन पुलिंग बलात आकर्षण ईज नॉट ट्रेइंग टू फोर्सिबली ब्रिंग आउट द वर्ड्स फ्रॉम हिस मौथ हियर स्वयं ऑटोमेटिकली निरर्गल अर्गल इज ए लॉक तापाल Uh, the bolt that we put for a door that is called argalam nirargala ityute that which doesn't have any such obstruction so uh, the vani is like a pravaha roopa it's like a flow it's in the form of a flow which has no obstruction tatha bhavati yatra yasya vakye yasya mukhe etadrishi bharati vartate saha eva स्रष्टा कविहि इति कथ्यते सह स्रष्ट नाथ स्वप्रतिभया निष्पादक वन हू इज एबल टू क्रिएट यूजिंग हिस् इंटलेक्ट स्वप्रतिभया नाथ से निष्पादक हूज एबल टू क्रिएट डिफरेन्ट कई ऑफ मीनिंग्स एंड वर्क्स हि इज कॉल्ड कवि 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 नाम्ना कथ्यते व्यवह्रीयते सो ऑन द सरफेस मीनिंग यू टेक स्रष्टा एज ए क्रिएटर नॉट एज चतुर्मुख ब्रह्म यू टेक इट एज एनी पर्सन हू डज ए कृति निष्पादक 
Now this word srashta is usually used for Brahma also because he is the original creator of this world. So when we have to say prajapati or srashta, immediately our mind goes to Chaturmukha Brahma. There are words also to support this sort of an image in our mind. Now this is your dhvani here. Your, the, the second meaning that you are going into is about Brahma, who is actually a non-contextual person. We don't, why does the poet have to talk about Brahma here? He doesn't have to talk about Brahma at all, right? That's not the context here. That is the non-contextual thing. But that non-contextual image creates such a beautiful thing that you are able to compare the poet with the Brahma, who has created this entire world, which means the poet is capable of creating a poetry world, a world of literature, which is as variegated or as beautiful as what Brahma creates. Right? So every word now can apply to Brahma also. And that is what you will see here in the brackets where he has given Srashtra Pakshe Iti. So what are all the srashtra pakshe? The first one is rasaha bhavaha. Rasa, raga prayuktaha bhavaha mandasmitadayaha tesham guni bhutaihi upaskarakaihi. Uh, I have to get that book. Half the time, even out of Vyakhyana Mundi, I'll have to check with Ape Dikshita. So when we look at Brahma's creation, he is looking at Brahma's creation in the context of people. Brahma has created many people here and each one of them has a passion and <coughs> Raga Prayukta Bhavaha, <coughs> the actions that they do like Mandasmitam and all that are prompted by the Bhavam that is there in their mind. This has nothing to do with the Kavyam. In the normal world where we are interacting with other people, we have some intention in the mind which is called ragam either it's a passion for something or it's something like that that raga prayukta bhavaha mandasmitadayaha so we make certain gestures which are re revealing of our inner intention also this is present in the srashtra paksham in the creation of brahma tesham guni bhutaihi you take it as tesham vijrambhanena because of uh, that, when we use that, uh, uh, when we look at people, uh, we have these uh, uh, ingitam, no? we show some gestures which are understood by the other people. Mm. Then, tadvijrambita hetu bhutaihi alankaraihi. These can also be accentuated by the ornaments that a woman is wearing or a man is wearing you know these can also be accentuated by those things so guni bhutaihi these bhavas uh, uh, are usually uh, either act, uh, uh, put down the regular alankaras that we have so you take two people one is wearing a lot of alankaras the other is also wearing a alankaras but you prefer one person over the other person why is that it is because they have some intrinsic actions charisma that go along with that person which overshadow these outer ornaments so rasa bhava bhavanam uh, bhavaihi guni bhuta that's the artham that you take it can also be in shashti usually so, taihi guni bhutaihi alankaraihi kataka keyura dibihi. Kataka is vanki, keyuram is also, kataka is kada. You wear bracelets and keyura are vanki. These are all there. So, usually when a person is wearing, we told that kavyam is like a man's shariram. So, a person's shariram is such that there are some bhavas that are there inside him. There are ragas. He has, uh, has he may be a naturally humorous person. Uh, and those come out in the form of smile, etc., etc. And those actually put down the outer appearance. So sometimes the inner beauty comes out much more than the outer uh, uh, alankaras. So these alankaras, kataka ke yuradibihi, then rupa yabbanadibihi, gunaihi, uditaihi, drishti vikaradibihi. You have these guna udaya. What is gunas? The form 
well, a, a young person, a person in his youth, uh, versus or a person who is a child, may be more attractive than a person who is old. You would rather spend time with a young person because you want to feel young in your mind also. So that rupam, yavvanam, all these will uh, give rise to certain uh, uh, actions which will make you, uh, which will make it easier for you to go and uh, 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 talk to them. Correct. Instead of people who are probably old and they're talking about some their own experiences and their 80 years of life, they will be talking. You don't want to listen to that because you feel you will also become old by talking to them. But then if you're talking to young people, there is an udaya. There are, there are certain uh, things that come into your mind, which makes you refreshed because of that. So this is the natural creation of Brahma. This is the creation of the regular human beings that we see. Yatra Vagdevata Ratim Karoti. If Vagdevata and in this creation of Brahma and Brahma is a person where Vagdevata naturally is the uh, spouse or the Shakti Rupam behind uh, uh, the Brahma. Saha eva srashta kavihi ityapi tasya nama vartate. You don't need to take this kavihi iti kathyate for Brahma. You take only up to Yatra Bharati Ramate. So how do you connect these two? You have a kavi paksham. You have to put a tabular column and do this. You have the visheshana padas or just the words in the shloka. Then you take it as kavi paksha, srashtra paksha, srashta. Kavihi eva srashta bhavati. That is your common thing here. How is a kavi a srashta? He doesn't use the word eva in the shloka. Because once you use the word eva, then it is it becomes rupakalankara. That's it. You are reduced to that vachyartha level. But here he says, sa kavihi srashta bhavati. Srashta is a word that will go as brahma in srashtra paksham. And for kavi, you take it as nanarthasya svapratibaya nishpadakaha. He is a person who is able to create different kinds of uh, uh, poetry works using his pratibha. Uh, and then each word, you take it as separately, rasa is Shungaradi Rasaha. Here you take it as Raga, Dvesha, Ityadi. And then Bhava. Here is Vibhava, Anubhava and Sanchari Bhava. Here in the Srashtra Paksha, people have certain Cheshtas that come out of their mind because of the emotions that they have inside their mind. It is Mandasmitadaya. Guni Bhuta here indicates the Madhyama Kavyam, which is Agudadi Guni Bhuta Vyangehi. In the Srashtra Paksham, it means that guni bhuta, that which is, uh, um, you can say it is these ragas, etc. Uh, um, uh, the guni bhuta is an adjective to alankara, correct. Where the ornaments are being suppressed by the inner beauty that the people have. Alankara, anuprasa and upama are in kavipaksham. Kataka keyura, literal physical ornaments that we wear are in the Srashtra Paksha. Is that clear? Idvarikya. Next is Gunodayaihi. Madhuryadi gunaha kavye vartante. Rupa yavvanadi gunaha tu manushye vartante. And then drishti vikara is the udayam. What comes out of it? From madhuryam you have a beauty or enjoyment that comes out of it. Here there are certain actions that come associated with that particular age that a person uh, displays. Next is Bharati. Bharati is Vani in the sense of uh, speech for a Kavi and it is Sakshat Saraswati in the case of uh, 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 Srashta, Prajapati. Yatra Ramate, wherever this word just comes or flows in a very beautiful manner as far as the Kavi goes. Yatra Ramate, where Vagdevata has shown her love towards someone, which is Brahma. Is that clear now? This is how he has placed the shloka. Hmm. So Does the, Saraswati reside in the uh, tongue of Brahma also? Because he keeps on all four phases, he keeps saying um, Veda, Veda. That is, she is the Shakti Rupam of uh, Brahma. So, so in the in the Srashtra Paksha, so uh, most of it is clear. So we are saying that uh, 
the mandasmitadayaha, which are the mm. rasabhavaha in the people, is made secondary uh, or or makes their alankara secondary, makes their physical yes. their alankara secondary. Mm. And by that, uh, and then by the uh, gunodayahi, which is the uh, rupa yamanadibihi gunodayahi, tatra mm. taihi kim kriyate, taihi kim, tatra vani vilasate nama saraswati kutra vilasati, uh, in uh, Brahma, with Brahma. Oh, sat, okay, sorry, sat, uh, Saraswati Tatra Ramati. Tasmat mm. kim uchyate anena? Nothing. It's so just this image comes to your mind where Brahma oh, and Saraswati oh. are being oh, indicated. Avala okay. okay, Saraswati Tatra Ramati, Saha Srashta iti katyate. Haan, where Saraswati oh. decides to uh, be with him, you know, she, she smiles mm -hmm. and she wears a lot of ornaments. Uh -huh. uh, she has uh, ever beauty is there in her, she says uh, Yavvanatvam in her also. And she also comes of her own accord to uh, Brahma there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It seems and like is the... present with him. Mm. It almost seems like Saraswati is the Chit Shakti. Mm. Because Chit is what is making all these uh, things happen, like this shining happen. Like in the, in the Sastra Paksha, mm. right? Mm. Uh, mm. It's like a different thing. Actually, she is Icha, uh, Kriya and uh, Jnana Shakti. Mm. So mm. She is a representative of the Jnana Shakti there. Right. Uh -huh. right. So, but, and the Tandi Brahma is your Jadam. Vastu there. Brahma is the, is, the Swaru, is the Virat, the, the yeah. physical universe. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, and 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 uh, I mean we are thinking of thing thing as two two different things, but they are the, one and the same. Mm. Yeah. But so that is Brahma and Kavi Paksha Vani is actually the Vag Devi. Mm. Speech. She is, uh, she is shining in in the in the world of the Kavi. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll go over the Bhavam Shungaradi Rasaihi Vibhava Anubhava Vyabhijare Bihi. Uh, Shungaradi Rasaihi Vibhava Anubhava Vyavijari Bhavaihi Aguradi Vyangehi Anuprasa Upamadi Alankarehi. These are all things that we have seen. I don't want to repeat it again. We understand this, right? Madhuriadi Gunaischa Samullasita Vani Vani or uh, the speech which is very beautiful because of all these rasas, bhava, etc. etc. Yasmin Ramate. Wherever she is uh, shining, Nirargala Pravaha Rupa Bhavati, where she is shining as a flow of thought, uh, which is unobstructed. Saha, that person, Svaprati Bhaya, with his intellect, Nutana Artha Pratipadakaha Kavihi, Iti Namna Vyapadishyate, he becomes a person who is capable of creating new ideas, new Artha, and he is. Uh, indicated by the word Kavihi. Sacha Tadrisha Saraswati Vihara Aspadi Bhuta Chatur Mukha Tulyaha Bhavati. Sacha, this Kavi now becomes the becomes equal to Chatur Mukha Brahma. Chatur Mukha Tulyaha because he is the Aspadi Bhutaha. Aspadina, he is the, the um, uh, Ashrayam. Uh, he, he is the uh, residing place for uh, Saraswati to play in this manner. Vihara Aspada uh, uh, playing area, playground Madri. So Tadrisha Saraswati, uh, he, is, he, he is equal to Chaturmukha Brahma because he provides the playground for Saraswati to play in. So he is called Kavi Atayeva Uktam. This is a very common uh, shloka. Apare kavya samsare kavire kav prajapatihi. In this uh, apare kavya samsare. Kavya is like a world. Kavya samsare. Apare. This kavya samsara is also aparam. There is no end to it. Apare kavya samsare. In this kavya world which is which has no end to it. Kavihi eva, kavireka prajapati. He is the actual quote. Kavireva prajapati. Kavireka prajapati. This is there in Agni Purana. 
நியமரிதாம் <laughs> Ananya Paratantra, he doesn't have to depend on anything else. Whereas Brahma has to depend on so many Upadana Karanam, Nimitta Karanam, that this, he needs Maya, all that to create this world. Uh, or Pancha Bhutas, Panchi Karanam, all that. Whereas for a Kavi, he needs just his brain. That's all. Hladai Kamayim, Ananya Paratantra, Navarasa Ruchiram. Nava rasas are there, different kinds of rasas are there, but it is still ruchira. It's very uh, uh, sweet and it's enjoyable. Whereas there are only shad rasas in this world and still you can't enjoy all of those. You can't have, uh, constantly you can't have up, you know, salt, uh, you can't keep on having just one rasa. But in Kavi's world, you can actually uh, keep on having until you reach a peak and then you can come down. There is no limit to... how many of shringara rasa kavyas you can read mm-hmm. or how many of bibhatsa rasam you can read khladai kamai mananya paratantram navarasa ruchiram nirmitim adadhati bharati kaver jayati okay so kavihi ekaha eva prajapatihi bhavati visheshas yatha saraswati vihara aspadi bhutaha chaturmukhaha kavihi iti vyapadishyate tatha ukta rupa kavita shali eva kavihi iti vyavahriyate iti upama alankara dhvani this upama or this comparison is not there in the text at all the text only seems to talk about a poet that's it but because of the words and the meaning that it can contribute based on that we see another picture of brahma and saraswati being together now how do these two how do we connect these two we connect these two by using yatha tatha and that aupamyam is actually dhvani it is suggested that aupamyam is not in the direct meaning so just as how chatur ah, have a question <laughs> i mean in the, in the nama shloke tatra dhvani hi iti na ukta uchitam hmm. eva eto hi dhvani hi dhvanyate <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> in many places in Vedas also, when they talk about Kavi, it's actually an intelligent person, one who is the creator, Sarvagnya. So, Yaha Sarvam Janati Sayeva Sarvam Srashtum Shaktaha Bhavati. So, uh, Brahma can be uh, called as a Kavi also. So, he becomes a Kavi because Saraswati uh, has uh, taken place, uh, has Uh, taken her taken up residence with brahma so that's why brahma is also called a kavi and adi kavi hi ityukte the vedas came out of his mouth he revealed the vedas right and they go and merge back into him yasya nishwasitam vedaha one whose uh, uh, mere breath is the vedas and vedas are uh, metrical compositions which came out of brahma so he is also the first kavi in that manner tatha in the same way ukta rupa uh, kavita shali ukta rupa a, a person who is capable of creating kavita shali in the following manner that has been said uh, like rasa bhava etc etc kavihi iti vyavahriyate so a person who is capable of creating such poetry is also called a kavi so this similarity is suggested so there is an upama alankara dhvani ರಸ ಭಾವಾದಿ ಚಮತ್ಕಾರ ಹೀನ ಕವಿತಾವತಾಂ ಕುಕವೀನ ಉಪಾಲಂಭ ಚ ಧನ್ಯತೆ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ರಸ ಭಾವ ಆರ್ ದೀಸ್ 
and uh, gives only importance to shabda or he is not able to even create poetry in such a beautiful manner so kavita vatam ku kavinam bad poets uh, uh, who write really uh, you know bad poetry heena kavita vatam those bad poetry which does not have the uh, sorry they write poetry which is heena which is devoid of any chamatkar any beauties like uh, rasa or bhava etc those uh, bad poets are being ridiculed here upalambha that upalambha is also dhvani only it is a suggestion here that the vyakhyata is able to bring out swiye kavye now he comes to that in his poetry ukta rasa bhavadi samriddhi asti ityapi suchyate the kavi vedanta deshika also wants to point out that his poetry has all of these qualities ಸೂಚ್ಯತೆಯಂಕಾರೈಹಿಂಗ್ who is good at all this and who is good at bringing out all these things all yeah. these things understand ah adu serida ana tatra sahrudayatvam vartate kila tasmat tatra api vartate iti eva yeah it's there Vy- vyakhyata has to you know at least go as close as he can to the mind of the poet himself to bring out this beauty otherwise it's parimalikad uh, kila it won't be beautiful 